Hey guys, this is Julian of Julian Gray Media, and as you can see, we are in Ableton today, but it looks a little bit different than normal. You may have never seen this color palette um, before if you've seen other Ableton tutorials or even my own Ableton tutorials. This is the default skin, but it is not the default Live 9 suit skin. It is actually the default Live 9 intro skin. Now, um, what does this mean? That means we're in Ableton Live 9 intro, that's a little bit out of the ordinary for me. I'm typically in suit or standard. Um, but I wanted to do this series because it's never really been done before. Um, I was thinking to myself the other day, I make videos for the people who are just starting out in music production, who are getting their feet wet into production, and I'm using Ableton Live Suit. Now, I considered this and I thought, these kids or, or young adults or even adults aren't going to want to drop near a thousand dollars or half a grand or whatever Ableton Live 9 suit is right out of the gate like that. Um, and that's going to lead to uh, piracy, to, um, you know, just finding like uh, shady ways of getting software or just using the demo for 10 days and then not being able to use it again because they ran out of time and they don't want to spend that money. Um, so I thought. Uh, we would cover something that hardly ever is covered on YouTube because of its just nature. Um, we're going to be doing a tutorial video on Ableton Live 9 intro, and we're going to use the bare minimum that comes with intro on this track and um, just go from there. Now, as you can see, I don't know why, um, but because I have Suit installed on this machine as well here, you can see that I have uh, some of the Suit instruments um, installed into my intro. We are not going to be using any of those. The programs we're going to be using for this tutorial series, um, and we're only going to be using three, are Ableton, 9, Ableton Live 9 Intro, which is only about uh, one to two hundred dollars, depending on where you get it. Um, um, X for Record Serum, which is now available for rent um, with Splice Sounds. It's only ten dollars a month for a grand total price of one eighty, I believe. Or maybe 190 and you can pay it a monthly and then if you don't use it for a month you don't have to pay it and then if you want to get back into music or something later you can pay it again and then have it back installed it's only 10 bucks a month again and it's a lease to own option and you have no hidden fees it's really cool and then the third and final uh, plugin we're going to be using is I believe kick 2 uh, by Sonic Academy it's only I believe $70 and it's the only kick plugin you'll ever need. You'll never need to use samples again if you get this plugin. So those are the three plugins we're going to be using today in Ableton Live Intro and we're just going to be designing a track from the bottom up in a program that never gets any airwaves on the YouTube world. Now um, for your more advanced users I recommend picking up either Suit or Standard Edition just because of things we're going to be covering today but um, this is an interesting challenge and I want to do this just for the guys that are really really uh, don't have the money for Suit or Standard and want to just hop into music production um, and get their feet a little bit wet. So we're going to just hop into it. Now if you want to see the full feature comparison between Intro, Suit and Standard you can do so by clicking the link in the description below and then checking out Ableton Live's own page on it. Um, but I have a rough idea of the differences between the three and I'm going to um, try to work around anything that we run into in this video. So the first thing we're going to be doing is finding a synth to use. Um, we have no access to analog or operator in the real Ableton Live 9 intro. Um, so we're going to have to use um, some third-party plugins. Like I said before, we're going to be using X for Record Serum. Now this is a plugin that you can find a ton of free tutorials for online. Um, it's one of the most popular plugins you can buy or um, rent in your case and um, there's a ton of sound design tutorials on how to make a certain sound or something else I've made a few tutorials on it myself and um, we're just going to be doing some rough sound design here and make a little bit of a chord so to start things off I'm gonna play a few chords here I'm gonna turn down my interface so it isn't feeding back through to you guys 
And let's apply a filter. Um, if you guys want to skip this section, you can click on the annotation on the screen now and then just download the preset I use. Um, but if you guys want to learn some serum basics, then you can watch through. So um, let's just play a chord. I'm going to increase the unison up and that essentially um, a synthesizer is based on an oscillator, which is a, a tone generator essentially. It's generating this tone that you can see here. It's like this triangle or saw. Um, and that's kind of a rough sound. You, um, That's the basis of sound design is these, these shapes here. If we go to basic shapes, we can see this is a sine wave. It's smooth and you can consider that like a smoother sound. As you can hear, it's kind of like a smoother tone. Then we can go to the next one, which would be the uh, square. Or I'm sorry, the, the saw, which is a little bit more rough. We have the triangle, which is a little bit like a, kind of like a, um, I don't want to say a flute, but it's kind of softer. And then we have the square, which is kind of edgy. Then we have the uh, pulse width square, which is a square that is, um, modulate it a little bit to the left here. Kind of creates like an 8-bit kind of sound. We have an even farther pulse width modulated square. And then we have whatever this is, which is an interesting shape. So um, we're going to be using the uh, saw wave here, and we're going to increase the unison. Now Serum does a really good job of uh, visualizing everything that you're going to be doing here. So this, as we discussed before, is one oscillator. It's one voice. It's making this sound that you hear. So when you press the key, it creates that sound. Um, when we increase the unison, it's adding more versions of that same sound. So if we do two, let's see, increase the U detune a little bit here. There's two voices of the same sound. That's not directly apparent right now, but when we start to add more and more voices, we can start to hear it a little bit more. So if let's go to like five, say, and spread the detune. So each one of those lines you see in Serum here are a different voice, a unison voice. And that's essentially what unison does. So it spreads out that um, sound. But we're gonna be using a seven unison um, uh, saw wave here. We're just gonna be making a pad. Now when we play a note now, sounds a little bit wider. It gives it that pad feel. A pad is like that nice ambient texture you hear in the background of a song. So I'm gonna play a few chords here. A chord is multiple notes played at once. Um, and as you can see in the bottom here, you can see what notes I'm playing. So if you want and are curious, you can watch me play the notes. Cool. So what we're going to do is apply a filter to it. Now, if you've ever seen an EQ, um, an EQ looks something like this. Of course, I, I don't have it in this version of Ableton. <laughs> but an EQ is essentially a line with a bunch of dots on it, and you can drag dots up or down to bring up frequencies or bring down frequencies. That's essentially what this filter is doing. So every sound in the world has a frequency spectrum. It's what we can hear um, audibly. Um, we have the low frequencies, which is like the bass, as you'd say. You have the mid frequencies, which is the mids. You have the high frequencies, which are the highs. Um, if you ever reckon, realized, um, you, if you're outside of a club or something, you can hear the bass through the wall. That's the lowest frequencies, and they travel in bigger wavelengths. So these frequencies can travel through mediums like walls or um, stuff like that very easily. So they they are they are perceived as farther away or or lower. Um, the higher frequencies you can only hear if you're right near them. If you walk 20 feet away from them, then you won't be able to hear them as much. So we can use this to um, create this sense of depth. Uh, if we cut the top off of something, let's say, like, let's say, imagine this is the high and this is the low. If we remove the top end of that sound, it's going to sound farther away because you're cutting the top off. So. Um, that is the filter here. We're going to just cut some of the top off so it sounds a little bit farther away. Now, 
in contrast to having it all the way open, which is just right in your face. That sounds like it's right near you. But we're gonna cut the top off, like I said, and we're gonna apply some reverb. This is, reverb is essentially recreating digitally something um, that we hear a lot in the real world. Um, if you've ever walked into a stadium or a gymnasium or a cafeteria or something and you scream out as loud as you can, you hear the walls echo back at you a little bit. Um, it's kind of like a, it's uh, acoustics, if you know the term. Um, and essentially, you're going to get some reverberation, we call it, is when the, the sound that you make hits the wall and the wave bounces back at you. That's what reverb is, and then if we apply some to it, open up that filter a little bit more so we get a little bit more of that in-your-face sound. Maybe create, make the room a little bit bigger with the size, make the decay time a little bit longer, and increase the amount of reverb. We get more of a far away kind of patty sound. Now, I did a full video on pads. If you want to check that out, you can click on the link above me right now. It's all in Serum, and um, I went over a very similar thing to what I just did. Um, but if you want to dive a little bit deeper into sound design, you can do that now. For right now, I'm just going to do a little bit of a few modifications, and then we're going to continue right on. So here is the attack time. We want the note. OK, so this right here is the note that you see when we press the button. It goes on, and then it's sustained here at that blue dot, and then when we release, it releases. So if we increase the attack time, it re it increases the amount of time for the note to go to the full volume. So if we press the keys, it fades up now, instead of just going right up. This is a little bit easier to understand if we do this. So it goes all the way to full volume, and then it fades down really fast. Um, this is just a visual interpretation of the sound that you're making. So if we hit the notes now, I want it to be a little bit softer because I want this sound to be very soft and in the background. So we're going to do that and then we're going to grab this uh, release knob here, which is the amount of time it takes for the note to fade out after you have released the keys. So I'm going to increase this release time a little bit and we're going to hit play. And as you can see, it fades out. So that's good for a pad. We're going to reduce that and cut off again so we can cut some of that top off, like I said, removing that high in your face sound. And then we have ourselves a beautiful pad. Cool. So then we're just going to write out some chords here. Um, I'm going to set the BPM of the song, which is right here up in the upper left here. We're gonna set that to 128. We're gonna do a little bit of a progressive house tune. That's just because I'm good at it and um, it's easy to write fast. Now the BPM of your song is going to be the tempo of what you do. If you've never taken music theory or um, something like that, the tempo is the amount of beats in a minute. Um, hence the term BPM, beats per minute. Um, and that's the speed that your song is going to be. So if we do an insert MIDI clip here, we can start writing those notes out. Now, if you didn't see what I just did, we highlighted the section here. We're going to do hit create, insert MIDI clip, and then we can start to write those chords in this serum track right here. So um, if your Ableton looks like this, you might want to switch it here up in the upper right. That changes it to the arrangement mode. So we're going to be working primarily in this mode. If you want to learn about the difference between these two modes, you might want to click on the link above me right now and check that out. Um, I have a video on it. Oh, my second camera went away. Interesting. Okay. So um, let's start writing those chords in. Those are some pretty chords, I think. So we're just going to do that real quick. We're going to go. Let's just um, write in those notes that we're playing here on the keyboard. And let's just make them a full bar long. This is one bar, as you know. Um, 
essentially we're in 4-4 four, four time that means there's four beats in a measure and each beat is a quarter note um, music theory is something you might want to study if you want to get into this um, music thing so we're gonna do that we're gonna hit control D which duplicates the notes we just made and then we're going to copy them into the place where the second chord is Now you didn't have to press the control D, you could have alternatively just clicked and dragged out the notes just like we did before, but control D is a very useful tool if we want to just duplicate something fast. So there we go. And then there's that nice mo note here, um, we're going to drag this up into place. Actually, sorry, that was there. The note I had there was this note. Cool, and then if we hit play, we can listen to that full thing through. Just by hitting the space bar, you can hit play. And that sounds pretty cool. We're gonna duplicate that over and over again by highlighting everything from this point to this point. So we get that full bar and then we're going to just um, make sure this blue mark here ends at that four. As we said before, we're in four, four time and there's four measures here. So we're going to duplicate it with control D like I said, um, and just do it four times and make a four um, measure long, um, or I'm sorry, 16 measure long, um, progression here. So now we have a little bit of a progression. I think I'm going to add something new now. Let's do a um, let's actually rename this first. If you want to rename a track, you all you have to do is right click here and then uh, let's name it pad for example. Um, if you want a, a rundown of how Ableton works, like the basics basics of the program, you might want to check out the link above me right now and watch my video on the absolute basics of Ableton before you continue this video. So we have the pad here. We're going to create a new MIDI track and we're going to drag in another version of Serum. As you can see, plugins here, Serum here, and then we're gonna drag it in. Um, now what we're gonna do is we're going to make a bass sound. So. If you're playing this on a keyboard or if you want to um, play lower on your MIDI keyboard, all you have to do is press the Z key on your keyboard. The Z key drops it a full octave. Um, if you don't know anything about music theory, there's 12 notes in a scale um, and then every octave is 12 notes. So if you drop it another octave, you're going to get the same exact note, just one full octave lower. There we go. I'm playing that on my computer keyboard. If you have a MIDI keyboard, all you have to do is hit the octave button and then you can jump. Or if you have a full size MIDI keyboard, you just play closer to the left. Cool. So what we're going to do now is let's just um, work on a sound for this. Now we have the default saw right here. We're going to go and we're going to go to analog basic shapes and we're going to use this sine wave here because it's a smoother sound like I said earlier. Now you might not be able to hear that on your speakers because it is very low. If we bring this up an octave you'll be able to hear it a little bit better. And then we're going to layer a second sound on top of this original oscillator here. We're going to do a oscillator B which enables a second waveform layered on top of that one. So we're going to do, um, again, we're going to do the basic shapes and we're going to go through this wavetable position thing here and find a, let's use a saw wave. Let's drop the saw wave one octave down and then we're going to play some notes here. 
So now we have a layer of that nice soft sign and that nice edgy saw. So when we play those two together, we get something like this. That's a nicer bass tone. Now what we're going to do is we're going to enable oscillator B on this filter here. We're going to turn the filter on and we're going to do the same thing we did to the pad. Let's just turn that cutoff way down. We don't want all that in your face sounds in the bass line. We want it to be kind of lower and uh, rumbly. Um, and then we're going to do something called a um, filter cutoff modulation. So now, we I explained this before. This is envelope one, which controls the volume of everything. But envelope two is not mapped to anything currently. So what we're going to do is we're going to make a shape that the bass will follow. Um, if you want to skip this section again, you can click on the annotation on the screen and skip the section and then just download the preset. But what I'm going to do is download, or I'm sorry, not download, drag the envelope to controller to that cutoff we just changed. And now it's going to make it so that we can, this envelope here is controlling where that cutoff moves to. So now as you can see, it's at full volume all the time. But what we want is a little bit more punchy of a sound. So what we're going to do is we're going to drag down the sustain here. So that the high sounds punch through at the beginning, as you can see here, it's all the way up. And that means that this will be all the way up. And then it fades out gradually over time. So it's going to go up. And as you can see, that blue dot as it moves, it kind of illustrates this a little bit here. So you can watch the blue dot here move down as this blue dot moves down here. And essentially we're just letting in the high frequencies for the first sound and then dropping it out immediately after. So that's a pluck sound. Um, it's a pluck bass line, if you will. So what we're going to do now is we're going to work with that a little bit here and we're going to write a note that corresponds to this. We're going to do create MIDI clip and let's do like a cool like a you can turn on um, actually okay let me just go through that again. If we highlight a section we can go create MIDI clip insert MIDI clip rather and then we can double click on it and then we get this piano roll here. So now we can write out those notes that we want under this section here. So to do that, all we have to do is double click like we did before, and we can enable this headphone button here to find the correct note. So if we listen, that sounds about right. And let's do like a, a kind of a floating rhythm like that. that and then let's drop that an octave by highlighting everything and doing shift down key and then one more time and then let's duplicate it and then we're just gonna play this by ear and try to get it where we think it sounds good I'm actually going to take these up an octave, and then maybe we'll we'll adjust where they are. Resolve it back to D. I think that sounds pretty good. We're going to actually extend these notes out a little bit here. We're going to highlight everything and we're going to hit um, legato mode, which right here, which and 
extends every note so that it hits the next note. So you'll see what I mean in a moment. So we hit that, it extends every note out so that it extends to the beginning of the next note. So we're going to do that. And then we're going to make the envelope here a little bit longer because it's a little bit short right now. And then I'm going to reduce this cutoff here so that the highest point in that um, sweep here is only hitting a little bit lower um, because we don't want such high end in that bass line, I don't think. So we're going to cut it down a little bit. Cool, and that is sounding pretty good if you ask me. I'm just going to duplicate that and then um, we have ourselves a nice bass line. Next thing we're going to do is add, or actually let's rename this first like we did with the first one. You can either right click and rename, or as you can see here, we can do control R and then name it base. I'm trying to teach you guys the keyboard shortcuts early on so that you guys can get a head start. Um, and we're going to do insert MIDI track, which you can also do control shift T. Um, and then we're going to do another instance of actually no we're gonna do a kick two instance this is the other plugin I told you to grab um, I'm gonna actually do a review of kick two when it does come out I will link it above me right now cool so we're going to load in kick two now this may look a little bit um, I, I guess uh, intimidating at first but I promise you it'll be okay so what we're gonna do first and foremost is we're gonna draw out a kick pattern here so let's insert another MIDI clip like we've done before and we're going to double click on it and then we're going to draw in an eighth note pattern which would be one kick on every beat and um, we're going to drag or I'm sorry yeah we're going to drag in and draw a note on every one of these beats here and then to save time we can just highlight and then duplicate highlight and duplicate and then just duplicate it over so now we have a beat on every beat now if you hit play here Oops, that's a little bit too long. Um, I want it to be once on every beat, not every. Um, or I'm sorry, once on every quarter note, not once on every eighth note, which is double the speed of a quarter note. So if we hit play now, that's sounding pretty good, but we're going to work on that kick a little bit here. Now, when I said earlier that kick two is the only kick plugin you'll ever need, or kick in general that you'll ever need, it was the truth. This is a kick synthesizer and allows you to build a kick drum of your choice. For now, we're gonna do something really basic. So let's just pick, um, within their preset browser, we're gonna hit pick uh, house music and let's just pick something here and then just um, browse through and see what sounds good. To do so, we're going to highlight this section and we're going to right click and we're going to press the loop selection. Then we can just hit play and then we can select a preset and it'll continue looping the section over and over and over again until we pick which kick we want. So let's hit play here and then let's just choose. like that one so what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna tune this kick now um, what we're about to do is find the key that the song is in now in order to do that all we have to do is add a MIDI clip here and what I'm gonna do is add another instance of serum just um, for testing purposes we aren't gonna design a sound we're just going to test and find the key that the song is in so if we hit play and then we hold a note, we have to find which note sounds correct throughout the entire phrase. That's not quite there, I think it's this one. And that is a D. So the key is in D, what we're going to do is we're going to um, 
tune this kick drum so that it's hitting in D at all the time. So what we're going to do is we're going to find the D points in this kick and we're going to drag them to D. Now we this is always has a little bit of room for error, so we're just going to um, uh, just try to find the best we can. There's D, and then you can drag this pitch here, and that'll tune everything around. But we're going to put that at D. We're going to move this down to D, or up to D rather, and then we're going to make sure everything's at D, and then we're going to hit play. drag this one up or maybe out just play around with it until you get something that you're satisfied with I'm not overly fond of that kick sound maybe we can um, try something else let's try like bass house kick in place um, that's there now what we're gonna do is just duplicate that kick over and then we can remove this loop here in order to do that you just hit this button here and that disables the loop cool so now um, we have a cool progression going here let's just uh, play some back sounded pretty good everything is a little bit loud as you can see down here we're clipping so we're gonna turn everything down by just clicking on the top uh, pressing the shift key and highlighting everything and just turning it down a little bit just so we aren't clipping out of the box next thing we're gonna do is do a little bit of side chain compression um, this is a, a very popular thing within progressive house Essentially what this allows you to do is grab the compressor and it basically turns down the volume of whatever you put it on whenever the kick comes in. So it kind of goes, uh, 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 instead of just, uh, uh, and I'm sure you've heard that in dance music a lot. So we're going to drag the compressor onto that pad here. What we're going to do is we're going to, I know this looks a little bit uh, intimidating, but we're just going to press this button here. We're going to hit side chain. And we're going to do audio from kick. So now, when you hit play, it's going to show that kick playing here, even though we're highlighted the pad. What we're going to do is assign this threshold a little bit lower. So this is going to say, whenever this kick goes above this line, it's going to turn down the volume of this pad by this amount, or this amount here. So um, if we hit play here, hear that that pad is kind of it's got some motion to it now give it a little bit more we can increase the edge of that that cut by increasing the ratio if you want to learn all about compressors I did a full video on compressors and you can check out that link in the description or if I have any cards left you can click on that above me now but yeah we're gonna increase the ratio reduce the attack a little bit we got ourselves a nice little side chain here we're just going to copy this side chain by right clicking and just hitting copy and we're going to paste it on that baseline now and we can unsolo that pad by the way this is solo you can solo any one sound by pressing that button and you can um, hide uh, or stop listening to a sound by pressing this button here by disabling it um, this button allows you to record on a track or use your keyboard to control it 
and um, yeah those are the basics and these are the volumes obviously so um, if we hit play now that we applied the side chain to that bass let's see how it sounds It's already sounding pretty good. Next thing you're going to do is grab that EQ3. This is the only EQ, unfortunately, that comes with Ableton Live intro, but we're going to use it anyway. We're going to drag that onto here. And we're going to, because this is the pad, we want to reduce the high sounds on it just a little bit here. Let's reduce it by like negative 10. Now let's reduce the super lows by let's say negative uh, five. Um, actually, let's do negative seven, um, just because we want to cut a little bit more. Now, basically, what I'm doing now is I'm cutting the bass out of the pad so that the bass on the bass channel comes through a little bit better. Um, we don't need that high end as much either because as we established before it creates a sense of it being close and we don't want that. So we're going to, um, let's increase this frequency low. That essentially sets where this becomes the low frequency versus the mid. Um, this is at 402 hertz. I wish I can show you what that means but I don't have a, um, a real EQ because this is a intro version. So um, let's just hit play here. Sounding pretty good. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna add a um, a lead of of sorts. So let's just add another MIDI channel like we've done before. Plugins, dragons here. I'm just like the same. And what we're gonna do is we're going to. I think we're just gonna use a little bit a saw wave for it, just to keep it simple here. And maybe add a little bit of unison like we've done before. Maybe a little bit of filter off the top just so it's not as punchy. And then we're going to add some reverb to this as well just um, to establish it in the mix a little bit more. A little bit less this time so we're going to decrease the mix amount. And then let's increase this uh, attack time a little bit here just to uh, give it a little bit of. Decrease the um, edge to it. We're going to do that same thing again. We're going to apply that envelope 2 to the cutoff here. And let's, let's make it all the way up. And then we can make a sharp edge just like we were doing before. We're going to make it so that it comes all the way to the top for a millisecond, then turns itself down. reduce that resonance. Now, by the way, resonance, I've been turning it down the whole time, but if you want to know what it is, it resonates a frequency um, where the cutoff starts to cut. Cool, and then we have a lead. Let's just play this back and then let's see if we can write something. That's sounding pretty good. Um, we're actually going to record this one. Um, alternatively, you can just drag, create a MIDI clip like this, and then just write in the notes yourself, like always. But um, I'm actually going to show you guys how to record something now. We're going to hit the record arm button here, and then we can either play it on our keyboard. Or we can play it on a MIDI keyboard like I'm using here. Um, but I'm actually going to record this one 
and um, we'll see how that goes. So we're going to hit record up here and we're going to make sure that we have this track here armed for recording. So here we go. Hit record. And let it, let's, let's actually record something here. And that sounds pretty good. I think we're going to just uh, reduce that clip size to that right here and we're going to right click and hit um, consolidate that makes this clip now if you missed that um, as you can see I had all that recording space that I missed in the beginning here that was this here all this extra space if I hit delete it blacks it out but it's still there and I want to get rid of it so I'm going to right click and just hit consolidate so now I have a solid clip here we're going to consolidate what I just played or I'm sorry we're going to quantize what we just played um, that just makes it so that it's perfectly on rhythm. Um, you might not want to do this if you want to get an organic feel, but I want to just make a lead that um, is perfectly on time. So we're going to highlight everything. We're going to hit right click. We're going to quantize. Now this is going to quantize to that rhythm. As you can see, now it's perfectly on beat. And we're just going to hit play. <laughs> I kind of want this to end on a different note. And then maybe we can add like a cool like like this. And go back to that first note. And then yeah, it sounds pretty good. Let's just rename that so we can ditch the recording title and we're gonna rename this to lead and just duplicate it so now we're starting to get a track together here so I'm gonna add a little bit more reverb to that uh, let's increase the mix increase the decay time reduce the high cut um, so you're getting a little bit more of those high sounds in the reverb and that creates a again the closer to you kind of illusion <laughs> So we're going to just paste that uh, side chain onto this channel as well. I just copied it from the base like we did before. Copy, add it, paste onto the, the lead channel here. And then we're going to just, let's actually remove the second version of this. Well, actually, let's um, highlight these two right here. And then we're going to hit right click consolidate. Another way to do it is click one of these and then hit shift and then click the other. And then we can hit consolidate or control J if you prefer. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to change up that melody for the second time it plays. That's why I made it two bars long instead of one like these. As you can see, there's two of these and the amount of time that this now takes up one. Um, we're going to change the latter half of this so it's not the same thing over and over. So we're going to hit play. And maybe bring it to the lower version. That should sound pretty cool. Now, melody writing is something a little bit more challenging. If you don't have a natural knack for it, it might be challenging for you. Just practice. So now we have a cool um, counter melody section, kind of, or a different progression there. So we're going to duplicate that, and then we got ourselves a little bit of a track here. kick up a little bit and the lead down a little bit and then what we're gonna do now is add a little bit of a clap and a hat now because I didn't want you guys to have to buy any drums I'm only going to be using the default drums that come with Ableton and I hope these actually do come with Ableton so I'm gonna use the 909 kit and drag it onto a new MIDI channel here and then we're going to find some cool sounds out of this and then use them. And now, alternatively, if you can't afford kick two, you can also use the, the default kicks in here. 
they aren't the best kicks, but they work. Now what we're going to do is we're going to highlight a section, right click, insert mini clip like we keep doing. We're going to add a hat. Now a hat, if you heard before, is like a boom, 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 boom. So it's on the opposite note of every kick drum. Now as you know before, um, we made every kick drum on every beat like this, every quarter note. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. As you can see, it's counting here. But we want the hat, as we just explained, to be on the opposite notes. So we're going to drag these in between every kick drum. Then we're going to duplicate these, and then we have ourselves a hi hat. Just duplicate that a few times. That's sounding pretty cool. Let's just rename that hi hat. And um, let's add a clap now. Actually, let's just experiment with the other hats in this 909 kit. Let's enable that headphone button so we can hear what we're working on when we drag it. Maybe an open hat. Yeah, I kind of prefer that. And maybe it decreased that decay time a little bit so the hat isn't so long. Because again, decay is the amount of time it takes to decay outward. So we have that hat now and let's add another MIDI channel and let's grab another one of those 909 kits. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna do a clap now. So let's do another MIDI clip as always. And we're going to double click and we're gonna find the clap sound here. Let's hit the. Um, and then, if you use that same analogy we used before, it's a boom, scotch, boom, scotch. The clap happens on every other kick drum. So, if we had a kick here, and here, and here, and here, and then we had the hat here, and here, and here, and here, every other kick drum is here and here. So, if we highlight these and we drag them up with control, we can find that where the clap should be, which should be on every other kick drum. So let's just delete these notes here. And then we have the kick drum, or the clap. Now what I'm actually gonna do is I'm gonna um, actually duplicate this onto the snare channel as well, just so we have a little bit of layering going on. A, a good clap is usually comprised of multiple different layers. So I'm gonna actually hit the Alt key, and or I'm sorry, the Control key, and drag these down. And that just makes a copy of them. So we're gonna make a layer with that snare so we have this now cool that sounds pretty awesome um, we're gonna just duplicate these now we're gonna highlight it and duplicate it. I actually did a full video on drums you can check that out on my channel I'm positive I'm out of cards now so I can't link you to it but um, I did do a full video on drums you can just search it on my channel so there's the claps now over and over. Turn it down a little bit. Then we're going to do the same thing we did with that first part here and just um, highlight the two and then we're going to consolidate these so that we can do a full um, eight bar drum pattern and do some cool stuff with the claps. And at exactly halfway, we're going to do like a cool rhythmic clap run here. Like that. Let's see if that sounds any good. Again, holding the control key copy. It's kind of groovy. I'm actually going to duplicate that. And we have that cool clap run again. bass down a little bit and then maybe experiment with the volumes a little bit and then we got that 
that snare in place. Snare slash clap. So that's the basics. Let's grab um, maybe a. Um, let's see. What can we do? I'm actually going to grab a compressor and compress that clap together. Now, again, if you don't understand the basics of compressors, you can check out the video on my channel on the basics of compressors. It's called the absolute basics of compressors. Um, and I'm just going to drag it threshold down. Essentially what we're using the compressor for now is to catch those, both of those sounds, the hat, or I'm sorry, the clap and the snare together. And we're going to squash them together into a more um, unified clap. Now rather than explaining what I just did, you can check out the video on compressors on my channel. Um, and that is the basics of writing a song in Ableton Live intro. We can try a couple other things, but um, that's a basic tune. It's not the best tune ever. Um, I don't write very well on camera, but I hope this is informative to some of you. Um, especially those of you that are just starting in Ableton. I might do a follow-up video to this, maybe a part two or part three, like I did with the other series, but um, for now, I think that's fine. I'm going to just play this through one more time, and then um, we will call this wraps. I'll just expand everything here, and then just give it a play. We're flipping a little bit, so I'm turn something down. And that's sounding pretty wicked. Uh, I think the last thing we're going to do is apply a um, limiter to the master that can uh, kind of give us some more volume and give us uh, less um, <laughs> less dynamic range but uh, more volume to the track. So let's um, just give this a listen here and then let's set the limiter accordingly. Essentially what a limiter does is it takes, if you've ever seen a waveform, it's kind of jagged and some places are louder than others. It takes those loud peaks and cuts off the top of them and makes them flat and then you can boost the entire flat piece up to where the top peaks were. So if we um, uh, use a limiter, we are removing some of the dynamic range but we are gaining volume and that can make us sound louder. So we're going to hit play. What we're going to do is we're going to set the ceiling a little bit lower here. And give us some more gain. Oops. Don't want the auto release. I'm going to set the ceiling at, let's say, there. Turn the lead down. And then you have your first track in Ableton Live intro. If you guys want to grab this project, you can download it in the description below. Um, if you guys like this video, I'd appreciate a like on the video. If you didn't like it, give it a dislike and let me know why in the comments below. Uh, let me know if you're going to be picking up Ableton Live intro, sweet, uh, standard, heck, light edition if you want. Um, and let me know if you have any questions for me or any future video ideas um, for me. If you guys want to see more videos, I make a video every Wednesday and Friday and you can check them out on my channel. Um, I do Ableton tutorials primarily, but I'm also doing a lot of cool other projects right now. Um, I won't get into that. Um, you can check them out for yourself and make sure to subscribe if this video did help you. Um, it does help me a lot when you guys subscribe and watch my content. So um, 
yeah, let me know in the comments below what you thought of this video. I am Julian of Julian Gray Media, and I hope this was informative. I'll talk to you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.